What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1002 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you will learn about common operating system types and their purposes as it relates to 32 bit versus 64 bit workstation operating systems, cell phone, tablet operating systems, vendor specific limitations and compatibility concerns between operating systems. Let's talk about 32 bit versus 64 bit file systems. So an operating system is system software that manages computer hardware, software software resources and provides common services for computer programs. One of the main functions of an operating system is to enable the computer to keep track of all of the files used on the device. In computing, a file system controls how data is stored and retrieved. Without a file system, data placed in a storage medium would be one large body of data with no way to tell where one piece of data stops and the next begins. By separating the data into pieces and giving each piece a name, the data is easily isolated and identified. When utilizing Windows operating systems, depending upon the type of file system a user utilizes for a hard drive can affect the following. It can affect rules pertaining to how large a logical drive or a drive letter can be and whether or not the hard drive can be used as simply one drive or if the drive is divided into several smaller drives or whether the hard drive must be multiple separate drives altogether. It also affects data storage efficiency in terms of maximizing the use of available space, and it affects implementing measures to protect a system from tampering, as well as affecting the ability of a drive to be accessed by more than one operating system. Now, Windows operating systems can support three types of file systems for hard drives and USB flash drives, and those systems are FAT32, NTFS, and XFAT. Let's talk about FAT32. So FAT32, which stands for File Allocation Table 32, is the 32-bit version of the FAT file system. The FAT32 format was employed on Windows PCs in 1995 prior to the NTFS file system. FAT32 is widely used for USB drives, flash memory cards, and external hard drives for compatibility between all platforms. FAT32 has some of the following characteristics. It has a 32-bit file allocation table that allows for 268,435,456 entries per drive. Entries are allocation units or folders that can be used by a file. FAT32 allows for the root directory to be located anywhere on the drive with an unlimited number of entries for drives as large as 16 gigabits. FAT32 uses an 8 kilobit allocation unit size. FAT32 allows for a maximum logical partition size of 2 terabytes. FAT32 is compatible with Linux and Mac operating systems. For partitions larger than 32 gigs, Windows cannot create a FAT32 partition, although Windows can use a larger partition if it already exists. And then FAT32 is mainly used to format flash memory cards and USB flash drives for use in workstations, media players, smart TVs, printers, cameras, and other USB enabled devices. Some of the limitations of FAT32 include it can only support individual files of up to four gigs in size. It cannot use file permissions and it does not support journaling, which enables corrupted files to be fixed. Let's talk about XFAT or FAT64. So XFAT stands for Extensible File Allocation Table, and it is a file system that supports 64-bit addressing introduced by Microsoft in 2006 that is optimized for flash memory, such as USB flash drives and SD cards. XFAT functions just as easily as FAT32, although it has many more improvements in terms of capacity and scalability. The main features of XFAT are as follows. It can support volumes larger than 32 gigs. The recommended volume size is 512 terabytes. The theoretical size is 64 zettabytes, where one zettabyte equals 1 billion terabytes. XFAT file system structure allows for improved performance with flash media and movie recording. It supports universal time coordinate date stamps, and it can be used with Windows 7, 8, 8.1, and Windows 10. 
end. And here is a lovely screenshot showing you some of the file system formatting options that are available with this particular USB drive. Let's talk about workstation operating systems. So operating systems can be classified as either open source or closed source. Open source software is a source code that is made freely available for possible modification and redistribution. Closed software, which is also known as proprietary software or vendor specific software, is computer software for which the software's publisher or another person retains intellectual property rights, such as either a copy copyright or some type of patent rights to the source code. To access closed source software, a user typically has to be granted permissions and also pay a licensing fee. Microsoft Windows, which is simply known as Windows, is a group of proprietary graphical operating system families, all of which are developed and marketed by Microsoft. Windows is the most popular and utilized closed source software product in the world. In the 1980s, Microsoft started off by providing the operating system for IBM personal computers using a command line input system called DOS or Disk Operating System beginning in the early 90s, DOS was replaced with a GUI or graphical user interface system called Windows. In 1995, Microsoft introduced Windows 95, which eventually led way to future versions of Windows, such as XP, Vista, Windows 7, 8, 8.1, and 10. Apple's closed source software is called Mac OS and was released in 2001. Now, at the time of this recording, the latest version of Mac is called Catalina, and that is version 10.15.7. Mac OS software was specifically designed to integrate with Apple's mobile devices that use the iOS operating system, such as the iPhone, the iPad, Apple Watch, and the Apple TV. Linux is a family of open source Unix-like operating systems based on the Linux kernel. And that operating system kernel was first released in 1991 and is named after a guy named Linus Torvalds. Hope I said his name properly. Linux is typically packaged in what is called a Linux distribution or a distro. Some of the distros are available as command line interfaces and others come as GUI distros. The most popular distros of Linux are Ubuntu, Mint, Kali, and Red Hat. There are companies such as Red Hat that modify the Linux source code and then charge individuals or organizations for support towards the modifications. Let's talk about cell phones and tablet operating systems. So the two major mobile operating systems for smartphones are Android and iOS. There are very few people who own a smartphone that utilize Windows Mobile. Two of the main differences between an Android and an iOS smartphone are as follows. Android operating system updates are provided by the wireless carrier and iOS updates are provided by Apple, but wireless carriers do provide new network specific updates towards the actual iPhone. Windows Mobile, this is a discontinued family of mobile operating systems developed by Microsoft for smartphones and personal digital assistants. In 2019, Microsoft ended its support for the mobile OS and essentially exited the smartphone market altogether. Microsoft Surface Pro tablet that runs off of Windows 10 and it pretty much functions like a regular laptop. Android is a mobile operating system based on a modified version of the Linux kernel and other open source software designed primarily for touchscreen mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets. Android is a free and open source software where its source code is known as Android Open Source Project, whose mission is to maintain and develop the Android platform. One of the main draws to Android is that the code is open source, which allows for developers to modify and freely create applications for it. Now to figure out the current version of the Android device that you may be using, you could just simply go to menu settings, about phone and the software information, and it will display the version that you are using. Now be mindful that due to various licensing agreements that allow for customization, Android devices are likely to have different interfaces and features from different vendors. 
iOS is a closed source software mobile operating system created and developed by Apple exclusively for its hardware. It is the operating system that powers many of the company's mobile devices, including the iPhone, the iPod Touch, and the iPad. Apple iOS is based on Mac OS, which has its roots in Unix. Now, to figure out what version of the iOS that you are using on your device, just simply go to settings, general and about, and you will be presented that wonderful information. Let's talk about Chrome. So Chrome OS is a Linux based operating system designed by Google, which is installed on Chromebooks, which are essentially inexpensive laptops designed to run web based applications. It is derived from the free software called Chromium OS and uses the Google Chrome web browser as its principal user interface. However, Chrome OS is a proprietary software. Let's talk about vendor specific limitations and compatibility concerns. So virtually all smartphones in the US use either Android or iOS. Each OS has many benefits that keep a loyal base of users on both sides. Apple iOS is a vendor specific product and some of its benefits are as follows. Apple controls the operating system and this offers better quality control and safety of Apple products. Apple iOS products integrate with other Apple iOS products way more easily due to the closed source platform. Now, a potential downside to the iOS platform is that iOS does not play well with non iOS devices. Android operating systems. This is an open source platform and some of the benefits are as follows. It has way more apps available for that platform and Android devices are oftentimes cheaper than iPhones and iPads. Now a potential downside to the Android platform is that Android allows the use of third party apps, which can present security issues for users and their devices. All right. So now let's go ahead and get into some of this wonderful check on learning, shall we? So the first question is, which of the following is an open source mobile operating system designed for smartphones and tablets? Is it Windows, Android, iOS or Chrome OS? So which of the following is an open source mobile operating system designed for smartphones and tablets? The correct answer is uh, Android, that is an open source platform, ladies and gentlemen. Next question. A Microsoft proprietary file system optimized for flash drives is known as what? EXT3, FAT32, NFS, XFAT, or CDFS. So a Microsoft proprietary file system that is optimized for flash drives, which one is it? The correct answer is XFAT, which is also known as FAT64. And the final question is, which of the following operating systems use a web browser as its main user interface? Is it Linux, Chrome, Microsoft Windows, or Mac OS? So which one of these uses a web browser as its main user interface? The correct answer is... uh, Chrome operating system uses a web browser as its main user interface. All right. So in summary, we have talked about common operating systems and their purposes as it relates to things such as 32 bit versus 64 bit workstation, cell phone, tablets, vendor specific limitations and compatibility concerns as it deals with operating systems. Now, if you felt like you have gotten something valuable from this information, go ahead and hit the like button, the share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also, go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1002 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.